Mm, dink, dink. Oh, my God. Welcome back to the Jen and Julian podcast. <laughs> I wasn't ready for all that energy. Always be ready. I was having quiet time. <laughs> I could hear. I could hear the nothing. <laughs> that's what prompted me to make noise. Oh, yeah, see? That's you and I in a nutshell. You hear me having quiet time, so you need to fill that time with noise. If you ain't making noise, you ain't making... Welcome welcome back to the podcast. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to help you build a fantastic and beautiful website in a very easy manner right now. Check it out by going to Squarespace, that's S-Q-U-A-R-E-S-P-A-C-E dot com slash Jenna Julian. Save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain or just give it a, a, a try with a free trial. They have 24-7 customer support. Uh, very, very awesome platform. Also, guys... Me undies. Me undies. The wonderful company that decided to come out with an otter onesie. These are otters. And they're holding hands. And they're holding hands while they float on their backs so they Significant don't otter. drift away from each other while they sleep. This is their new onesie. They're coming out with new onesies seemingly all the time now. And the onesies are made of the same material that the undies are made of which is the micromodal fabric. It's the only onesie Julian can wear because he gets too hot and everything else that's ever been invented. <laughs> for all my peeps out there that run hot, look no further for a onesie that you can wear. It is so breathable and wonderful. Guys, go to meundies.com slash Julian. Save 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100%, 100% satisfaction guarantee. More on that later. Thank you, sponsors. Um, Thank you, sponsors. Who do we have here? Just two of my lovely quiet time friends, Julian. Hey. Oh, no, 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 no. Please don't yell into my plant. I was just saying hi. Oh, okay. For those of you that are listening and cannot see, right now we are joined by two of my best friends. I want to preface this by saying Jenna has been working very hard on being a responsible and also a very advocate plant owner. What does that mean, advocate plant owner? I don't know. I was just trying to think of a fancy <laughs> word. A responsible and active plant owner. You're yeah. getting new plants every single day. Oh, um, not every day. Oh, my God. Well, every single day that we have time to go to the plant store. Well, because I have a very specific vision. My point is she hasn't really talked about it or showed it on anything yet besides the stream a couple times because... She want. I mean, you want to make sure you can take care of them and do a good job before you kind of show it off. So, like, I, well, I was waiting until after spring, like, or summer after they have a little growing season, you know. Also, half of them might be invisible because we're on a green screen. <laughs> so these are the backs, which should show up. Mm. Anyway, my point is that you've been doing a really sick job, and a lot of people don't even see the behind the scenes of you you doing your research and getting these plants. But I do, well, and it's very cool. I'm, it's a cool hobby. So. I'm very much a beginner. I want to do like a plant tour and I want to share my love for plants, but I'm trying not to jump the gun. Um, I'm a beginner for real. Like it's, it's been a lot to learn. And so I don't want to be like, Hey guys, welcome to my plant tour. And there's plants there that are just like fucking dying. By the way, I haven't killed any plants except for one giant pothos. Also, I haven't killed any plants pothos. either, in case you guys were wondering. I feel like you might have been wondering. Yeah, Julian, <laughs> Julian has been very patient and accepting of my plant obsession, and uh, I'm very lucky that he lets me do it because it's getting – it's it will get out of hand. It's, yeah. it's so easy to just all of a sudden spiral into madness. Well, I think we'll be able – I'll be able to identify that before it happens. But so far, what's to get mad at? It makes you happy. It makes the house look more beautiful. It makes the air more more clean and breathable. It's like noticeably better, yeah. right? It's uh, like uh, we just built a room downstairs. We put it together with these plants and this chair. Mm -hmm. It looks like a Pinterest room now. Mm -hmm. Like why would I complain about that? Yeah. Well, so when I, I, I like I watch so many plant videos on YouTube and I have a lot of people that I like watching because it's super relaxing to me. I don't know what happened. Like I grew up with plants as a little girl, like my mom had a uh, Christmas cactus, she had pothos, she had spider plants, um, and I would just walk around with this little jug of water and water the plants every week, like it was one of my chores. But like, I always sort of thought that they were dowdy and like not cute, you know? 
What? I'm listening. She's really cute. She's being really cute. She's being a little egg today. She's shaped like an egg. She looks like an egg. She walks like an egg. She's the same color as an egg. <laughs> oh, a brown egg. Yeah, a little brown egg. Wow. A little blonde egg. Mm. I always thought that they were like kind of dowdy, you know? Like I just didn't appreciate them. I thought that they looked matronly, you know? Oh. Yeah, because my mom would have like macrame planters. Well, like maybe the they hangers. were matronly. Well, that I just, they always reminded me of our dining room which we didn't really eat in, that was like full of this like really dark wooden furniture, like not a lot of light, reminded me of just like vapid void, like no sun winters with all these windows and it's fucking freezing in there and I have to go around with this stupid little thing of water and like reach up super high and then it starts spilling on the ground. I don't want to clean it up off the ground, but like oh my, God, my mom's sounds... not going to know if I just like swish it around my foot a little and into the hardwood floors. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't like doing it and I didn't appreciate them. And my dad had a giant Christmas cactus too or a Thanksgiving cactus, whatever you call them. Yeah. And they flower. Mm -hmm. They're really pretty. And like in the winter, you would have these little like red or pink blooms. And I was like, when I was little, I was always like, you know, I grew up in a place where there's no fucking plants that live in the winter except for your pine trees and mm -hmm. shit. And I'm looking at this beautiful green plant with pink flowers indoors in upstate New York where there's no fucking sun for like eight months of the year. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, what a fucking ugly plant. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> like I was a shit little kid that didn't appreciate the beauty of a living plant inside of your home and how spectacular it is. So fast forward a bunch of years later, what sparked your obsession with, well, not obsession, but like interest and hobby in getting plants for your new house? Well, so A, we got a bunch of plants when we lived in our old house. And even when I was in college, I had like fake palms because I've always liked the way that like, you know, a palm tree looks. Mm -hmm. To me, something that makes a really exciting plant is something that just does not fucking belong here. You know what I'm saying? But like for me, now that I live in Southern California, a bird of paradise is like still the prettiest thing I could ever imagine, you know, because mm. you just don't see them. They are good looking plants. I can't, I can't get over their leaves, their flowers. What is that? What is that? What is that? Okay. I mean, I grew up with those. I know you did. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, you grew up with like a lot of, there's just plants growing. See, where I grew up, everything drops its leaves and it, it looks like it's actually dead. Side just note. like your soul on the inside when you haven't seen the sun in fucking forever. Side note, I have to put you on blast. Because what? from someone who comes from the tundra, yeah. who likes to always talk about how horrible and cold it is. and dark it is. and it's the tiger. miserable. Yeah, okay. I open the door for five seconds at night and you lose your goddamn mind. I'm not dressed for the cold. I'm not dressed <laughs> for the cold. I'm wearing my pajamas with no bra on. There's a draft going up my shirt and you just open the door. The and yeah, it's like 45. It's 45, but I'm wearing my fucking, my clothes for inside to relax. The dogs need to go outside. What do you want me to do? They can go outside, but sometimes you don't tell me and I don't move away from the door and get a big draft and I'm cold. I like- Hello? I sometimes cold is cold. Sometimes I can't believe how quickly you yell at me because the door was <laughs> open for three seconds. I'm cold. I'm not dressed for that. I just wanted to put you on blast. Yeah. Um, well, when you live in a cold place, you dress for the cold, and we're we're not like walking. We have to drive. There's no like. First of all, there's nothing around to walk. <laughs> Where are you to. going? Yeah, it's just like the other side of a fucking big open field. Mm. No. Mm. Cool. <sighs> Anyways, I will say though, you you do make fun of me sometimes for being a, a little warm LA boy, but yeah, you are not as bad as some people who who weather shame people who grow up in warm climates. I'm not trying to weather shame. I just think it's funny whenever we travel somewhere cold, like you in Rome. No, not me in Rome. <laughs> I try. I I am good now. I took a couple practice runs. You are better. It like would, in Canada recently? <laughs> yes, you are better now. But like, it, we literally went to Santa Barbara one time and you didn't bring a jacket and or it you, was like 40 degrees You didn't bring out. your phone. And, or my wallet. <laughs> or your wallet. So who, who's pointing fingers at who now? We were in Santa Barbara. <laughs> we couldn't buy anything. Uh, that was so I was funny. freezing. 
we had like just started dating and Julian was like, let's drive somewhere. I'm I like, think we told drive, the story, but yeah. Let's drive to Santa Barbara. And he didn't bring a jacket and it was freezing. But that's like. It's on the ocean. It's yeah. fucking cold. No, it gets cold at night. Yeah. And uh, that's, that was like classic young me. Like, and oh, I I'll be fine. I'm always hot. And I then totally I get forgot. There and freezing. And I forgot my wallet. So we couldn't even like go anywhere and do anything. Yeah. Well, I think we got like tacos and then like went home. Yeah. It was really fun though. It was it romantic. Was, it was. Anyways. Anyways. Yes, you're better about the cold. We're, well, since we're exchanging compliments, you're better about not weather shaming me. So thank I'm you. really bad in the heat though. I get like cranky and I can't do anything. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean my body's not used to it. Well, the heat out here, it's not not it's an, ain't no baby heat. Yeah. This is like I still wear pants in it. Dry valley heat. Yeah, I still wear pants in it. I know you do. I know that. Yeah. (laughs) Wear leggings. I know. Mm -hmm. You know what's weird is I feel like, and this this might be wrong, just like my my bad memory, but I feel like last winter, like a year ago now, wasn't really. We didn't have really weather. It was just kind of like moderate. There wasn't. There was no rain. There was like it snowed here recently. It snowed in LA like last week, like ten, like five, ten miles from us. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so we had like this winter of like normal weather where it was like didn't Winter. really dip dip below 50 degrees even at night mm-hmm. and then summer comes and you're like fuck already but this year we've had a lot of cold days and, and mornings and nights a lot of rain so when summer comes i feel like it'll be a little more welcomed mm. the end of my story mm. please subscribe to my book club mm. anyway anyways oh sorry oh oh what <laughs> oh was that distracting my anecdote <laughs> On our podcast? No, no, I was joking. <clears throat> you know what? what? I'm gonna lay on that on the <laughs> table. <laughs> I want to be the center of attention. Julian just pointed to a small orange cushion on the table that Marbles likes to sit on. Sometimes. Marble, do you want to sit in your spot? We should play this game where I, every every time I do something physical and outrageous on the podcast, you have to like in an NPR voice describe, describe what I did. What it was. Yeah. Okay, come here, honey. You gotta sit in your little spot. Julian, no. Okay, it's your little spot, honey. Yeah, just for you. It's not always that Marble chooses a cushion and decides that it's a good cushion, but he right away decided that he liked that one. He likes it because... What? Oh, he said it's breathable. Okay, Julian. Good boy. (laughs) Talk to him like that. Good boy, Poochie. Poochie, Poochie. Poochie. <laughs> I love calling dogs Poochie. <laughs> like that episode of Family Guy <laughs> when he was like, hey, I'm going to go pet that person's dog without asking. Yeah, and then I'm going to open his mouth and try and look at his teeth. And Brian's like, don't do that. We don't like that. <laughs> don't do that. We don't like that. No, it's, believe it or not, it's from an episode of Breaking Bad early on when when um, Aaron Paul's character is going to his like drug dealer friend's he house. He's a character this, that would say Poochie. There's this like, Pit, pit bull, like really angry. I don't even know. It might have been a pit bull. No, it was like a um, German Shepherd or something. Really like angry, like drug dealer dog. Mm-hmm. And he just goes, hey, poochie. Oh <laughs> the dog God. just starts to bite him. And he's like, oh, shit. So now that's how I. Hey, poochie. <laughs> don't do that to her. No, she's too pure for your garbage. No, she likes. She no. Like, you enjoy garbage from me. She likes my nonsense. No. My baby. I burped in her face yesterday. <laughs> You're terrible. She, she actually liked she it. She liked it. Have she you ever burped like in your it. dog's face? No, yeah, she that sounds gets wild. Excited. The dogs love it. They're no, like, PG. Ooh, what's no, that? Peachy likes it. <laughs> <laughs> not that Marvel's not Kermit. Just Peachy because she's nasty and food driven. <laughs> you guys she, belong together. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. She's my dog. She's like <laughs> she perfect for me. Dog. She's nasty. She's sweet. I'm very sweet. Say it for the podcast. <laughs> Just say it. Yeah, Julian, you're very yeah, sweet. Yeah, very sweet. And But uh, when food comes out, not like literally everything goes dark except for the food. And then I'm just like focused. It's like a hyper-focused ability we have. She is the same way. Mm-hmm. She turns into a literal different animal mm-hmm. when there's food. I've seen her foam at the mouth for food. <laughs> she might be feral. Should I get her looked at? Are you... She's okay. Anyway, that wasn't a tangent. Anyways, you want to talk about plants? Plants be like... Water me. Oh my God. What is wrong with you? Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like so much, Julian. I can't be 
you. around you. It's like you make me distracted. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. I'm proud of my, my decisions. Okay. All right, so tell us about this one and why we have it, because this is definitely not a plan I've seen before you got one. Um, okay, well, I wanted to talk, talk about how I got there, mm-hmm. because um, I had, like, fake plants in college, because I, I just thought that... I didn't do any research. Like, I thought that you had to water them, like, every day. I thought having a plant was, like, a big commitment. I don't think that's uncommon at all. I, I think a lot of people think that. Yeah, yeah, like, it's too hard. Oh, my God, I'm not home enough for a plant, like, you know... Meanwhile, I have two dogs, but like definitely can't have a plant that's too difficult, you know? That's what I thought. Um, And then even in our old place, we did have a vegetable garden. We did have a bunch of succulents, all of which died. Most The kale, I swear, just took over that garden. That well, it, we never ever gave that whole thing a fair shot. We like mm. we but we planted like a little bit of basil, a little bit of kale, a little bit of like cilantro, mm. scallions, whatever. And we didn't do anything besides water it a couple times and just like let it and grow. The kale and then the kale overgrew, took over. overgrew all the planters. And then something started eating the kale. Yeah. Like an animal would come at night and eat the kale. Yeah. I have a hard time growing anything that's like food. Yeah. It's like. It's difficult. Just bugs. Could, yeah. And it's pests. a different beast for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely hard. And I fortunately haven't had too any like pests yet with my indoor plants. I know that. It's eventually something I'll have to deal with, but you know, just once it happens, it's sort of like you just have to take care of it. But I did find some millipedes in pod the other night, whatever. Anyways, so I always thought that it was just like something that I had to take care of constantly, and I didn't realize how little work most of them are, and like they like Mm -hmm. when you don't do stuff to them. Um, so once we bought our house and I knew that I wasn't gonna have to move plants which is a fucking nightmare um because they're alive you know you yeah, damage they, them yeah and they get stressed out so stressed out mm-hmm. I was like okay let me get some good like low light air purifying house plants because now I'm here yeah and we're not gonna move and I'm super excited and let's get some plants so I, and I assumed everywhere in our house is just low light because I'm scared And I don't understand what light is, you know? I'm just like, I don't know. seems dark. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Fair enough. I wasn't the type of person that was like, assumed every plant could live in my house. Fair enough. I was the other way. To be fair, our last place and the place before that. So dark. Horrible light. So fucking dark. Pitch black inside. Yeah, (laughs) comparatively. Like, we have great light here. Not to say that our light is amazing, but yeah, comparatively. And it's the winter right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's less sun, but we still get a lot of sun here. So it's been easier for me than if we lived somewhere like where I previously lived, where in the winter your plants really start to suffer because there's just not a lot of light. They just go like dormant. A lot Some of, of them can right? go dormant, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I started with like a snake plant and a ZZ plant and uh, a couple things like that, like easy, easy indoor plants. And we brought them home and they just fucking took off. Like they yeah. were so happy. And I realized that I only. Fiddly fig. Yeah. Well, I realized that I only needed to water them, like those particular plants, when their soil is like fucking dry. And I'm like, okay, so you're saying I just sit here and enjoy you for the majority of the time and don't do anything to you? That's amazing. That, that was also one of the most surprising parts for me too when you told me that. And like I think, like I said, this is I feel like this is a common misconception is like a lot of houseplants are very difficult to take care of, which they're really not. Like you just need to learn mm-hmm. the basics. But like, yeah, you let the, most of these get their soil completely dry. Well, not completely, but yeah. The, well, a lot of them, yeah. So uh, one thing that helped me a ton was getting just – it. It literally has a meter that says dry and wet. (laughs) And I stick it in the soil. It's like my favorite thing to do in the morning to get some coffee and to walk around all my plants with my soil meter. And I just check all their soil. I see how they're doing. I wipe down some leaves maybe. And, you know, most of the time I don't have to water any plants. Mm -hmm. And it's not like on a schedule. It's not like once a week I water them. I just water them as they need it. And it, you know, takes... Well, at this point, I have over 50 plants, I think. So it's it takes me a little longer now than it yeah. did. But it's just, you know, 10, 15 minutes in the morning to go check around and 
take off any dead leaves. Who's or... your favorite plant? <gasps> Don't do that. Don't Come do on. that. You clearly brought these two up for a reason. So, right? oh man. Well, yes, I love them. But um, my, for the most part, most of my plants are super easy. But then I fell down the rabbit hole, which is why this is a dangerous hobby. Because first of all, this plant is a Hoya, which is one of my favorite like, I don't know, species, I guess, of plants because their leaves are like thick and waxy. They don't have like leaf drop. They, they're they just sort of like cool looking. They look baked. They're called the wax plant or a wax flower. Yeah. And they fucking bloom Yeah. if you give them the right conditions, which is cooler temperatures at night and uh, good sun. But yeah, they have like a really interesting shape that they hold. Well, yeah, there's like hundreds. There's a million different types hundreds, of them, yeah. yeah. So once you you find a plant that you like, then you start finding out how many other types of them there are, and now you're now you're sucked in. Mm-hmm. Now you're sucked into the rabbit hole. How many Hoyas do you out. have? You have a lot of Hoya. This is the Hoya carnosa compacta. I also have the crispa, or the, I think the variegated version, mm-hmm. Hoya compacta crispa, I think it's, or Hoya crisp, whatever. I have the variegated version of this as well. Well, um, explain what variegated is. Variegated, it well, I don't know the technical term, well, just but it in means general, it's yeah. got white on it. It's like I, I, what I'm assuming is like an albino type of plant almost. Yeah. It needs a little more love, a little more light, a little more care, but like people go nuts for them because they're, they're really beautiful. Cool. Yeah. So like if you look up like a variegated Monstera Deliciosa with the like, it looks like a watercolor painting. Yeah. It's insane. Like some of them are just so insane. Yeah. And you have to be really careful with their light needs because they'll lose it. Whatever. I'm a beginner. So the thing that helped me the most is if a plant doesn't seem like he's doing that well, I just give them a little more light. Yeah. And they can't have any direct light because any light that just beams down on them will probably, you know, burn their like leaves if you were to put or them their outside. foliage. Yeah. Yeah, they'll burn. But uh, especially since it's February right now. If a plant is struggling, I just try and move them to a spot where they're going to get more light. And I've had success in caring for them that way. Um, but how many Hoyas do I have? I have... Uh, Obavada? Obavada, Crinkle 8, Carnosa, or, or his... It might be a Biblioada or something like that. Oh, fuck. Um, a Crimson Princess. Um, yes, the one that has variegation from the inside. Mm-hmm. And then the outside is the Crimson... Queen. Queen. Yeah, I've been forcing Julian to... I've been studying. But there's a couple of Hoyas that I really want, but I need to wait till springtime so I can maybe order them. So anyways, this the the whole like <coughs> getting plants and enjoying them has been really fun because they were all like sort of normal plants. I love my rubber trees. I love I got a um, fiddle leaf fig that everyone seems to struggle with, but like I'm having a great time. You were so time. nervous about that thing when you got yeah. it. You're like, this is going to die, this is going to die. And then it's like thrived so well. Well, because some of the tips that I read online is like, if you're not sure about a plant or if it's, you know, might be a little difficult for you, which everything in the beginning is difficult because I don't know what it needs. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it wants. Yeah. I can't tell. Or if it's like, you know, a specific species of plant or whatever, you're not used to it. So you don't know, like, like a, a pothos, pothos or you know a lot of plants if they're they want to be watered they'll like wilt a little and at first you're like oh my god it's dying it's dead i'm killing it but it's just its way of being like hey water me and then after you give it some water it perks right back and up. like certain things like the plant can do will say stop watering me right like oh yeah yeah like if it if it starts well this is a this plant loves high humidity so he might have a little bit of crispy on his leaves from the humidity, but most plants will turn brown. Yeah, our bedroom has turned into a little, a little bit of a, a rainforest. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. We now have two humidifiers to that. maintain a humidity level of fifty percent humidity in I, our room. I don't know what you're talking about. Which is about fifteen to twenty percent higher than the rest of the house. I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. It's nice. I'm not complaining. But it is significantly nicer than it was. It is nicer. It we is have nicer. a. I have a humidity monitor downstairs, and it's like regularly at thirty percent. Like it's dry. It's dry in this like house. Like your throat well, will I get mean, dry. We live in a dry, dry climate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, plants don't like that. Plants don't like that, especially the the ones that specifically need humidity. Like yeah, I this mean, guy. this my my baby girl's in this room right now, but when we're done here, she's going back. She's in going the back humidity. in the rainforest. What I think would be cool is if you started like a blog 
about all your favorite plants. A blog? Yeah, a blog. You could do it on squarespace.com. And so could you with your favorite hobby. You go to squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian. You save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And you can start building a website. It's a really great platform. Take Jenna, for example. She wanted to make a blog. Yes, I said blog with her uh, about her plants and and her journey as a plant person. Um, she could do that very easily. There's a lot of different templates you can choose from with Squarespace. There's 24/7 customer support. They make it so you can customize your website to look a certain way on desktop, mobile, or your tablets. We have our current Jenna and Julian website on Squarespace. We love Squarespace. It makes building a website and, and achieving your vision of having an online presence in the form of a website very easy. And uh, the best part is like it looks good and it's not really that hard to do. Um, you can also start with a free trial, but the 24-7 customer support is just to die for. It's award-winning customer support. They want you to make your website exactly how you want it. So click the link down below and check it out. Whether it's a business or a hobby Whatever you want to build a website for, check it out. I think it's worth doing. And then when you build a website, tweet it at us. We love seeing your websites. Mm -hmm. You guys build some cool stuff. Also, guys, if you want to look good and stay styling and feel great and maybe match with your significant other or friend, get some me undies. It's like the perfect solution to all of those things. It's amazing underwear. My underwear drawer is literally nothing but me undies at this point. Um, they're onesies. Jenna was wearing head to toe me and these the other day. Mm -hmm. I have the bralette, the underwear, socks, and my onesie on. I have socks on right now and the uh, underwear. Yeah, they truly have like an incredible uh, material that they use for all of their stuff. But um, they have new prints coming out with their underwear and their onesies all the time. Um, festive prints, they St. Patrick's Day, whatever you whatever you desire in terms of style, or they have simple colors if you want to keep it, you know. Tone down a little bit. You're like, okay, whoa, Julian, that's a lot for me. I'm an adult. Well, if you're an adult, you know, get a, get a solid color. You don't have to yell at me about it. Also, we can all just have different different opinions about things and get along while we do it, and also be wearing MeUndies. MeUndies um, <laughs> is a proud sponsor of the podcast, and MeUndies also supports us like outside of the podcast, which is really nice. They're like constantly tweeting at me and mm -hmm. like. They're yeah. so sweet. They're such a great they are team sweet. over there. Anyway, save 15% off your first purchase of MeUndies, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash Jen and Julian or click the link below. You will not be disappointed. Thank you. All right. Sorry about that. Wait, why are you sorry? <laughs> I'm not. I don't know. Um, so anyways, uh, my plant obsession started off very slowly. And then... Um, <laughs> True life it turned into something that's a little out of control and it will continue to get out of control until I gain some control <laughs> over myself. I. <laughs> Soon we're not going to have a green screen back here. It's going to be plants. <laughs> um, so I found out that you could order plants online. Oh, yeah. Here we go. This is this was the beginning of the end, I think. Um, there's a place called Logis that ships. It's the only place that I've ordered from. There's many places, but Logies is in Connecticut. So if you live in North America, it's a place that I've had luck ordering from. I also happen to live in a place where like, it's not the dead of winter. So like they have shipped plants to me with a little heating pad in it, but I think there are things that they won't ship and states that they won't ship to until it's nicer out, which I've also read is a better time to buy your plants anyways. Not in but the winter. Like here I right am now. just being like, it's January. You don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, so like this plant, this is a begonia. I think you say maculata whitey eye. And when I saw this plant, I just could not believe it. Like there's, I have a alocasia fry deck downstairs. Like the first time that you see some of these plants, it took my fucking breath away. Like I just have never seen anything like it. There's fucking spots on it. And there's then a small chance it's invisible right now, but the, yep. the backs of it is red. Mm -hmm. And then to just to make things fucking crazier, it blooms. Yeah. It it grows these beautiful little flowers if given the right conditions. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it blows my mind. And you can live in my house? Why and how, bitch? What are you doing here? I love it. This is a this is a real breathtaker plant. So this, this is a good looking Yeah, guy. when I saw this plant, I was like, I will do anything. I will do anything for you. I, like, bitch, I'm at your service. Which is why we have two humidifiers. <laughs> 
To be fair, though, it has been much better because we used to wake up with sore throats because the air is very dry and it does start to it's like... It's helped a lot. Yeah, it helps us sleep better and stuff. Um, and that room is going to stay under control because only the plants that need humidity are going in there and there's limited space. I can't get out of control. It is the rainforest. Plus it's also like the, I worry about this plant. I worry about her constantly. I'm worried if she's getting enough humidity, if the door is staying closed, if the dogs are coming in and out, if somebody shut the fucking door because the humidity needs to stay. You know what I'm saying? I worry about her and I, I don't want to do that all the time. That's why getting a plant like this has made me love and appreciate my ZZ plants, my snake plants. The ones that are, require zero. They need nothing. You give them nothing and they give you so much love the in ZZ return. The ZZ plant and the snake plant. Yeah, those, the ZZ plant hasn't seen any sunlight close. It's like in the middle of our house. Not it's even in the close middle of window. our living room. Yeah, f on the other side of like And it's everything. just thriving, and it's dropping like, new leaves every bitch, day. Like he's just dropping bitch, rap albums and mixtapes like it's nobody's business, <laughs> exactly. dude. Exactly. Yeah. It, that it's really rewarding to have a plant yeah. like that, which is why I think at first I was like, mm, that plant's not that cool, but like, yeah, it's going to live here and that, that's great. So, but it, I have grown to love and appreciate how much love they show you without giving them anything. It's pretty great. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it's nice that you like took the leap, but you did it slowly. You got your feet wet and then you started to pick up steam. And I, I like that you've kind of gotten into this selfishly because I'm reaping the benefits of having wonderful plants everywhere. Mm -hmm. And also, it, it's... You don't I'm, have to take care of any of them well, either. I, no, not really. But also, I'm, I'm learning a lot, too, about not only the plants and the specific species of plants, but also just, like, what it takes to have plants in your house. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The amount of effort, the amount of planning, um, and what you can gain from it. Like, when we were talking about that, that room that we were talking about downstairs earlier... It looks really great, and it would not yeah. look even close to like that without any plants. Well, it's a it's a tough room because it's north facing windows, so like not very good light. I'm sure a lot of you can fucking relate. Yeah. Like you just have these rooms in your house, and you're like, I would love this to look pretty, but like it just doesn't have good light, or it has like one small window. Or, yeah. It has a big window, but there's a overhang out front. There's a lot of trees and bushes out there, and it's north facing, so there's just not a lot of light. Mm -hmm. And I would love it to be nice, but I decided I was gonna fill it with some plants that really like that low light so we got a lot of snake plants mm -hmm. some zizi plants and i have had trouble with my pothos although to be fair i repotted him and then he wasn't doing well so then i repotted the repotting yeah I and don't, then he pieced the fuck on out. paper the pothos should not be giving you this much trouble it's the only plant i've struggled with but it, it was just that one yeah plant. but well, anyway we're, all, we're after this we're on our way to go get some more pothos so yes because i have a vision bitch and we're like, we're adding to that little patio outside that room. And yeah, so, I get like a, right. So here's the thing. Yeah. So this is a fucking rabbit hole that's literally never ending and I need to control myself, which is why I like, okay, you're here. I love you. There's like a couple plants where I'm like, I really want that one. Yeah. But then let's not do this, like go on Instagram and look at every plant and decide that we need all of them. No, like no, you no, were no, doing no, no. last night. No, I was not deciding I needed all of them. You were deciding there's you needed one a very plant, rare one. There's one plant that I want that I can't find because it just like, it doesn't exist. It's so rare. It's not that it's rare. It's a rare Pokemon. It's not that rare. It's just like they don't sell it in the United States. That but sounds there like are, rare. Like, people that that have plants, they'll sell cuttings, which I thought was insane. Yeah. Like they'll just like, you know, snip a leaf and then sell it to you for 10 or $15 in a Ziploc bag. And I'm like, that's crazy. What are you supposed to do with because, it so people know? Well, you propagate it. You put it in water, you put it in soil so it starts rooting. So then, it, you know, there's a chance that it just doesn't take at all. And now you've spent $10 and waited, you know, a week for this little plant in a Ziploc bag to get to you. Like how lazy. Can you please root it for me and I'll pay a little more money so I can have a fucking plant? So if you want no. to get into plants if as a get rich quick scheme, selling do that cuttings. cutting, I would I would do anything. I want that plant. Well, tell them what it is in case someone has one. It's a calumnia. I think. Well, I, I, part of the problem was I was trying to find the actual the name, exact of it, name. But of it. it's hard because the, well, there's this girl that I like on YouTube named Kaylee Ellen, and she makes rare plant index videos. She's, she's the also, one that sounds like pansy. She sounds like pansy. She reminds me of pansy. She's really relaxing. She really likes plants. And she's it's funny, relaxing and reminds you of pansy. Yeah. No, no, no. It's that funny must to be see like what kinds of plants people are drawn to. Like a lot of people like philodendrons. She really likes calatheas. Like I don't. It's really funny. I like hoyas. Whatever. It's really cute i really she likes calatheas and stromanthes but those ones aren't for me but i still really like watching her she does a rare plant index video and you can you can see even she struggles with like 
it's just hard to tell what plants are what. Like there's no pictures of them. They'll have maybe you have a just name. Do the yeah, research you yourself. just which is why her videos are interesting because I was looking on Wikipedia, right, for the specific name of this plant. The best that I could come up with was Columnia Gloriosa purpurea or superba, but I'm not sure. It's basically a goldfish plant, which is readily available here. The green kind with these like little goldfish looking flowers, which are super cute. But the one that I'm looking for has these like dark purpley fuzzy leaves, super, it like hangs down super far. And at the bottom has these like spectacular red flowers that go like this. Hello. It looks. Where is this plant? It looks very. Why cool. can't I ever yeah. fucking find it? I would pay a sketchy person on Etsy, you know, twenty dollars for a cutting of that, just so I could take it home and see if I could root it. It's a dope looking plant. It looks like a plant from a different planet, because it's like it's a black. It's like a black plant. I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah, but it's, it's very cool. That's that's a plant that I want, but probably can't find. So I'm just, you know, I'm not going to get another plant because I can't find it, you know, whatever. But uh, anyways, something that I've learned that is helpful is if you decide the the light that you have first mm -hmm. and then decide on a plant after is much better than getting a plant and then being like, fuck, 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 fuck. I need so much more sun than I have. <laughs> yeah. And panicking and having to put it like on the window. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we have the sheer curtains in front of most of our windows, which helps a lot because um, it they, breaks up the light a little bit. Yeah. Most plants can't have just like beaming sunlight down. I bright. want to get a prickly pear. I want to get a big old cactus. cactus. Well, you're in luck because we live in a great place to grow a cacti outdoors. We could grow them indoors, but we could also grow them outdoors. I want a big old prickly pear. I want to put it in my Jeep. Which is mm. currently filled with dirt because of all the plants we've been buying. I'm so sorry. No, don't be sorry. That's why I got a Jeep. Well, I got a Jeep to transport your plants. Aww. Wow. That's, that's so why nice. I got the V8, babe. Anyways, I'm, a, I'm still a, a super beginner, though, because these yeah. are all indoor house plants. And as summer comes around, I want to... Go outdoors. Work on the outdoors, which is a whole... I have no idea how to do that yeah. yet. I'm gonna, it's going to be a whole new learning curve out there, yeah. too. But... I think we're getting our feet wet nicely with that little patio because we can get a couple things for outdoors that can survive right now, like a prickly pear maybe, or like a, I don't know, you're talking about having certain I want citrus, a citrus trees. Tree. Yeah. Because um, you could grow them, people have them all over here in Southern California. You can grow such, which is like to me, oh my God, are you fucking kidding me? You a need person? a lemon, go out back and get oh a lemon. Oh my God, we can only grow apples, bitch. Oh no, we got citrus out here. Oh my God, we can only grow fucking apples and they're ready in fall and only fall. Save them. They're dead. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyways, though, if you go upstate New York and you eat some apples, I'm sorry, all other apples pale in comparison. I was talking about like how avocados. Do are... they have an apple fest? Ripe. I'm ripe. I'm ripe right now. I'm oh dead. I'm dead. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Don't, don't you guys have like an apple fest? I don't know what that question is. No, you don't have an apple fest. You have a flower fest. In Rochester? Yeah. Isn't there oh, like the a lilac festival. Lilac festival. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was apple. Apples. Well, I mean, we have plenty of places to get apples. You go apple picking. All I've time. taken you to my hometown many times. What, Santa Monica? Yes, and you've never taken me to yours. Okay. We should go to the Lilac Festival. It's in the spring, probably. Probably like May or March. I don't hmm. know. Something that starts with an M. Except probably not March. Mon I can't remember if it's like early spring or late spring. Is it Monday? Yeah, it's Monday. Okay. Anyways, I really like my plants, but I'm doing okay. I'm doing pretty good. I've had a couple that were, like, I bought a plant from Home Depot that was, I don't know what the fuck they did to that poor plant, man. They they made it soaking wet. They put it in a pot that it couldn't breathe in. It was fucked up. Mm -hmm. That's another thing you're finding out. Like, you'll buy plants from certain weird places, like maybe a Home Depot, maybe a Lowe's, whatever, and you find out it's just been, like, so poorly taken care of or, like, yeah. repotted in the wrong way or wrong yeah. size, mm -hmm. which is upsetting, but... yeah. Where'd you buy the Monstera again? At Lowe's. That's right. They repotted that thing. Oh way my too. God. He's still struggling. I mean, he's yeah. doing okay now. He's totally fine. That plant is a beast. Like they'll just do whatever. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a trendy Instagram y plant. It's a Monstera deliciosa. And they're beautiful. But somebody fucking put this plant in like a ceramic pot and he was soaking wet. So I took him home and I was like, okay. 
I'm not going to water you until your soil is dry. So I'm just monitoring him every day with my little meter. Not getting dry. He's just sopping wet for like two and a half weeks. And I'm like, that's it. It's a rescue mission. We're getting you out of here. (laughs) We had to repot him. But then he suffered because he was repotted. Oh, man. It was a lot. That poor guy. He's doing better now. Yes, he's on the mend. Um. But yeah, somebody did, did that plant dirty. Or like this, like, you know, we found a nursery around here that's family owned. Amazing. I love them. Mm-hmm. But like some of the plants, because they have like so many and they're all kept outside, you know, some of them just, they, they're they a little wonky, but I'd rather have a plant like that. And, you know, it's can, character. Yeah, it's character. Plus, like, the, he was a, such a wonderful, reasonable price, and I like supporting those people or any family-owned business. I really, I really so much prefer that nursery to like a big the, chain nursery. The chain ones, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I love them. Yeah. But um. Yeah, it's it it can get totally fucking out of hand. Mm-hmm. Well, because we have a a lot of rooms and a lot of light, and I have a lot of opportunities to put plants places. A lot of desire for it to look like a jungle Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay yeah well jungle it up and you know do your thing i'm worried though if we go out of town they're all gonna die no they're not because you like on paper take one week Mm -hmm. you don't really do a lot in terms of like aside from like checking them but like you're not watering them every day you're not no no, but like Kaylee Ellen says, that fucking, that alocasia, she calls it an eight mile plant because you got one shot to water him. <laughs> he starts wilting, you either water him and then he's good or he goes, goodbye, bitch. And then he leans over like that. Hmm. I need to double check that that's her name. I'm not like not calling her. What, the YouTuber? Else. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the plant. She's I don't think, so the, I was going to say, I don't think the plant would mind if you call it the wrong name. Please. Alocasia. Ellen. Um, I watch a lot of plant YouTubers. I love Plant Arena or like uh, Hilton Carter. You don't know who any of these people are, do you? No. Hold on. Do you want to hear her voice, Julian? Yeah, she sounds like Pansy. Yeah. But she's not yelling at me. Yeah, she's not flaming you. Let's take it. Let's take a gander. I don't. I'm like subscribed to her, but I'm not. Hello. Plant tube be like. It it's really cute. There's like yeah, Kaylee Ellen. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to the next episode of Rare Plant Index. You may have seen already from the title, but this week's episode is on Calathea. Now a quick great accent. Right? A few of you may yeah. good accent. Yeah. Okay, anyways, sorry. Yeah, don't watch those videos if you like plants, because you'll see these plants that exist that you can't get. So it's hard. That's how I feel about the Columnia Gloriosa. But the moment you find something that you can't get, it's like, okay, I'm getting that plant. You can't get it. Oh. You can't get oh, it. Oh, you just wait. You can't get it. I'm sorry, but I disagree. There's so many plants that exist like in tropical jungles. Just if you go on Wikipedia and you start clicking on them and, and looking up their names, like you can't get those disagree. plants. You can grow them in a greenhouse, like in a plant conservatory. You got to do what you got to do. Even then. I'm the king of finding things far away online that I'm not supposed to be able to get <laughs> and getting them. That is true. You you got that Japanese IG works when they weren't selling anywhere to sell you a turtleneck. For I've them. had a lot of success with Japan. I bought a mask. Well, actually, sort of. Back in my baseball days, I shopped on Nike.jp oh my God. instead of the Nike US store because they sold things that I literally could never buy. Just a little extra shipping. Just don't tell mom. And then get a couple. Don't tell mom. It's <laughs> so insane. Like when I was younger, there was no such thing as like ordering things online. Yeah, well, should have been my age. <laughs> oh my God. Anyways. Anyway. I really like I really like my plants, but it as I've gotten ones that need more love and care, which is nice because as a person that likes your plants, you constantly am like, oh my God, need something from me. You know? They need me. Mm-hmm. I love you. I, I want to take care I of you. Mother you. It's really nice to have maybe one or two plants like that. And then you the have rest one or of two them, Kermits and then the rest, the rest of them just... are like, I'm fine. Yeah. You know, but it took me a minute to appreciate the ones that are like, I'm good, fam. Yeah, true. 
That's true. Mm-hmm. It is nice. We've got a nice thing going. Yeah. House is looking green. Well, and it's just like, oh, uh, one thing I didn't realize about plants until I started having plants was like, I thought you sort of just get a plant and then you put it in its spot and then it lives there forever, mm-hmm. TM. Yeah. Sometimes you got to move them if it's winter. They need more light. Yeah. And We have sort of know. like mini nurseries set up for the new plants too to like get good light. And well, yeah, so they can get acclimated yeah. and stuff. But like... You know, it's always like I'm constantly just like moving plants around and being like, oh, maybe you'll get better light here. Or, you know, if he's not doing well in this spot, maybe I'll move him to this spot. Yeah. You know, which I have some choices there. But yeah, I mean, it's on an endless supply of window space. Yeah. Like it's starting to get a little crowded in spots, you know? Yeah, we'll just we'll keep an eye on it. Mm-hmm. Don't let like, it get too crowded. But it has made me deeply appreciate like all the cool plants that you like needs bright indirect light yeah. which i always thought meant okay i'll take you outside here that's you go direct light. that's direct light. wait tell him about how kermit tried to eat your plant oh he didn't though okay so here is one thing so i did not know that a lot of house plants are toxic to animals yeah but like marble peach even kermit they're not interested in the plants whatsoever yeah and i've also read information about how you shouldn't sleep in a bedroom with any plants in it but like something about the you know when the the light isn't there, then they're not making oxygen. They're making carbon. Oh no, carbon dioxide. Yeah, something. But like oh, no. you, you would get more of that from sleeping next to a person. So. Oh okay. I sleep next to a person. You're making more of it than the plants are. Whatever. Yeah, you sleep next to a person too. I don't know. Whatever. There's some weird stuff. On yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I've also seen people like angrily comment on other people's videos, like, "Oh my god, don't sleep with plants in your room. You're gonna die." <laughs> Okay. Like, I mean, that seems like a little bit ridiculous, but I don't know. Maybe mm. it's a thing. Um, they they're not interested in the plants, but it is a thing. Like, if you had a cat, for example, like some cats will try and chew. Like, he's not gonna chew on it. Yeah. But I had my Hoya outside. One of them, um, who has this like really spectacular like tendril growing up because that's how they grow in mm-hmm. some of them, and then they'll put the flower out at the end of that. But um, it was just sitting up and I was, I had him outside because he's in a hanging basket and he, I need him to dry before I put him back on his little wooden stool. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was just sitting outside with him, you know, looking at him, checking on his new little leaves, having a good time. Carmit walks up and just puts that long tendril just in his mouth and then <laughs> looks at me like, fuck you, bitch. And I was like, Carmit, Carmit. He just did it to piss you off because you weren't loving him. You were loving a plant. Well, it's like how if, if do you remember in our old place we had a drink on the table with a straw, and I caught him just walking up to it and like chewing on it and then looking at me. Like if something is sticking out at him, he'll chew on it just to sort of like piss you off. You know, God, that's the only time boy. I've seen him be interested in any. What of a plant. nasty boy! But yeah, if you had, a, I think it's you know cats or a curious dog, then yeah, it's not yeah, not good. But anyways, I have a problem. I don't think it's a problem. I think it's honestly, I'm, I'm excited that you've become so interested in plants because I think as far as hobbies go, this is probably like the least harmful one, the most healthy, happy It can get one. expensive. Aside what? from that, <laughs> you know what I mean? This is, it's, I feel like it's a cool thing, especially to watch, um, like, you know, living in the same house, like we get. I get the benefits of it, so it's nice. Yeah, you do. I get a lot of new plants. I get a lot of green. I get a lot of good-looking rooms. And it's been a fun like project to transform rooms and mm-hmm. stuff. But I honestly think that like the Dinks really appreciate you talking about the plants because I've like nonstop gotten comments in chat like asking yeah. you to go more in depth there's about your a lot of people that, that absolutely love plants and i get it you know like i it's so easy to just have a plant and decide you love it and then be like oh my god that plant exists what is that i need yeah. that one what is that what is that like ordering plants online dangerous mm-hmm. um but yeah i i will i'll at some point do like a a plant tour probably like on my main channel but I kind of want to wait till, you know. Yeah, for sure. Things will like this. We have a, I'm sorry, I can't speak, but like we have a full like array of sun. So like right now all the plants are in their winter spots pretty much. Mm -hmm. But after a full season, I'd like to see, have an idea of where they can live so they can thrive, have some good growth in the spring, you Mm -hmm. know, so I'm not showing you plants that I've had for 
two weeks and yeah, yeah, they're alive. But where I show you where they are, what kind of light they're getting is not correct. We'll wait. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll wait till it's the right time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'd love to show you guys my plants because I love them so much. They really just make me feel a lot. Yeah. They're nice. They're, they're really so nice. relaxing. Thank you for sharing them with us on the podcast. You're welcome. Me. Maybe we should make some plants up here for the podcast room. Some snake this plants is, or this something. This is a really good window. Now you can have like beautiful plants, but this again is a north facing window, so we might struggle. But they, there's no overhang, so you get mm -hmm. more light That's here. That's true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, thank you guys for hanging out. Hopefully, you enjoyed Jenna's plants. Sorry for Jenna's being annoying. Audio plant tour. No, this is really interesting, and I think a lot of people probably wanted to hear it. So. Actually, I know a lot of people wanted to hear it. Well, okay. Here's what I will say. If you want to get a plant and you're not sure and you're scared, as long as you have some sort of daylight coming into a room, mm -hmm. I'd say get a snake plant or a ZZ plant. Try you them just, out. You just can't really go wrong. They're very low maintenance. Yeah. Very low maintenance. Barely need water, barely need And it will light. help your air, especially like I wish that I had a plant when I lived in a dorm. Because I really wanted like anything to take care of and you can't have anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they let you have like a little plant in a dorm, but if they did, like a snake plant or a ZZ plant is perfect because you have something to care for, something little that can sit on your desk that's living, yeah. is nice, help clean your air. Like I didn't know a single person in our dorm that had a plant. So no. I don't think I did either. Right? I didn't like living in a dorm. I didn't like living in a dorm either. Anyways, sorry. Any, <laughs> anyways, uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Um, we'll see you next week for another podcast. And we'll see you all week on stream. Special shout out to the Ding fam who hangs out on our Twitch channel. We hit 6,000 subs last week. It's and insane. you guys are blowing our minds with the support over there. Um, so if you haven't checked out the Twitch stream, it's a lot of fun. We stream like for five to eight hours each night mostly, except for Wednesdays. And we play all games and hang out and drink. So yeah. check it out. It's in the description. Um, but thank you guys. And uh, we'll see you in seven days. We need to put her back in the humidity now. Okay. Time to bring her back to the rainforest. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>